or T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, we have to go from ready to start, 2, 1, zero. booster ignition, and liftoff of Shuttle Endeavour with NASA's final space station crew compartment that brings a bay window view to our celestial backyard. That statement that we just heard, specifically roll program, got me thinking on how a computer helps a rocket in flight. Without the computer, a rocket could crash nearby or a rocket could not reach its destination, wasting time and money on expensive equipment. In recent years, companies have been making and using computers to do amazing things with rockets. Companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin have been working on landing a rocket after liftoff. After a few years of watching SpaceX launch and land rockets repeatedly, and viewing Joe Barnard's work to accomplish this feat on YouTube with model rockets, I decided to give it a go. Besides, how hard could it be? I decided to do some research. A simple Google search should provide adequate results, right? Well, kinda. A simple search along the lines of Arduino model rocket flight computer turned up varying results. Some were very simple designs with Arduino boards and pre-built sensor breakout boards mounted onto perf board. Others involved a custom-made PCB with advanced components and a 3D printed mount in the rocket. Since this was my first standalone Arduino project, many others involving a breadboard, I decided to use a perf board and breakout boards for the sensors as not to waste time and money making a custom PCB. The speed that you, if you consider yourself a computer, can read data from a sensor, check the values, and record that data is extremely important in rocketry, especially since the rocket moves at an alarmingly fast rate. So a processor with a high clock speed is not only wanted, but necessary. I had plenty of Arduino Unos on hand, given these three examples. I also had a couple of the Arduino Pro Micros. Heck, even a couple Raspberry Pi Picos. But if we take a look at this chart, we can see notable performance differences between the boards I had on hand versus the board I got, the Teensy 4.0. The Teensy 4.0 has many notable benefits, but I chose to focus on the amount of pins I could use and, of course, clock speed. Great, now we have the brain of the computer, the Teensy 4.0. What else would one need to attempt to land a model rocket? Besides the obvious of saving data for later use, we need to know what data to record in the first place. Time, weather, date, altitude, position, movement, all great things. And we get these things, including saving data, with three main components. If and when we are to land a model rocket, there are a couple of things that we need to know. One is where the ground is. Since this is a model rocket that only costs a couple hundred dollars, Rather than a few million, being a SpaceX or Blue Origin rocket, being off by a half meter or so won't be as big of a deal as if we crash a Falcon 9. The speed at which the model rocket comes back to Earth is also relatively slow. Again, relatively, this is not a Falcon 9 rocket, this is a model rocket. Now, which sensor do I choose to do this task? Well, there's no fancy charts for this choice, and it was kind of made for me since there's a huge community already revolving around it, and that is the Bosch BMP-280. This is a great little barometric pressure and altitude sensor that has been proven on many other builds as well. And I have it here on my computer, located right here. Now the second piece of data that we need to know to land a model rocket is knowing where the rocket is. Now I don't have onboard GPS for this case, so we're just gonna use orientation as kind of a pseudo position of the rocket. Now we have chosen a couple of different sensors for this task, 5.9 DOF, Absolute Orientation IMU, but they were out of stock on Adafruit. So I went with the, now bear with me, this is quite the name, FXO S8700 plus FXAS210029 DOF. Now I ended up getting a BNO055 uh, after about a month or so of making the computer. So here is that um, FX, you know, the, the really long one here, and that used to live on my rocket right about here, but now it has been replaced with the BNO055. 
Now this is a great little board and I've been enjoying working with it. Um, the, the other one that I had chosen, this really long named one here, was also really good and I had no problems with it. I just preferred the BNO055 as it had a bigger online support community than this little sensor did. Now knowing what position or orientation the rocket is as it's coming in to land is a good idea so we don't light the engine accidentally while the rocket is sideways, turning our model rocket into a model missile and sending the rocket through Grandma Ann's window. That would really make her upset. So I did go for this guy for one launch and again didn't have problems with it, just decided to go with the BNO055. Now what good is a model rocket computer designed to record data if you have nowhere to record it? I mean, I could record it on the Teensy, but I would quickly run out of space and potentially lose the data in a power failure scenario. So I did some research and found that storing data on an SD card is relatively simple, and I was able to attach one to my computer right here. And I've had zero problems with the SD card flying out during a rough landing or, or a rough launch and it's been a great little addition to the computer. I did find for my next version a smaller version of this board that is a 3 volt only version and doesn't have this register on here and I plan to make that work so that I can save some some space on here. Alright so let's go over the schematic and see how I connected everything together. So I have the schematic here and I'm going to put a bigger version on the screen for us to read. The main feature I was looking for in the components that I selected was that they can communicate over inter-integrated circuit, or I2C, I2C, or IIC, whatever your flavor is, let's roll with it. This makes setting up the schematic very easy since they share the same database. The micro SD card works over SPI or SDIO, however, and so I decided to make use of the TNC 4.0 pins for that. Forgive my early attempts at creating my own libraries for some of the components. I promise they look way better now and are at least symmetrical. Joe Barnard of BPS Space and his landing model rocket series made this process more or less painless. There were some hiccups with understanding how Eagle works, but after a couple other YouTube videos, I got the hang of it. Not included in this schematic is the power regulator circuit. When I originally designed it, I was still thinking how I was going to power the device. I ended up with just your standard 9 volt battery. So I added a L7805SCV voltage regulator with a couple capacitors to smooth out and get the voltage down to 5 volts. Like I mentioned earlier, I decided to use perf board like the one I have here as the main board for my computer. Now this proved to be quite the challenge because I had to fit this board within the payload section of my Estes Olympus rocket, which is here, and fit all these components, give or take a few. So I had to get pretty creative on how I mounted things. So let me go ahead and clear these away and show you what I came up with. So here's a closer look at my computer. I have my TNC 4.0 here, my BNO055 here, my BMB280 here, a couple passive components for power regulation, an L indicator LED, a mode select button, as well as the SD card reader, and a power switch. And on the back we have not only a rat's nest of wires, but our lovely indicator buzzer to let us know the state of our computer. Now I have these nice little 3D printed retaining rings here to keep the rocket computer centered within the rocket tube as well as keep it from jostling around within the tube as well during flight. I also have here, I forgot to mention, my 9 volt battery clip. Now let's pull up the rocket tube that the computer sits in here and open it up. Okay, in here this is where the parachute and shock cord mount. But here I have 3D printed uh, some more retaining kind of baffles looking things for a 9 volt battery, which I measured so that when you stick it in, it fits nice in there and it's a pretty snug fit. It's not going to come out with, without some pulling and force. And this is really nice because I can take the computer and just plug it in 
like so. And nothing's going to happen because of the power switch. And if I were to turn it on, again, nothing will happen because right now I'm doing some sensor testing and calibrating, and it is just running the calibration right now. So uh, I'll just continue demonstrating, putting it in. It goes in like that, and it uh, rests nicely on top of that mount. Uh, and we can even move it around a bit, and get the wires out of the way, etc. Put it in nice and neat. And then we'll take the clear section and we'll slide it on, look for the mating section right there. Move the circle around. Bim bobbity boo. There we go. And it is mounted within the nose cone of the rocket. And it's perfectly centered. Doesn't get in the way, doesn't get damaged, doesn't rattle or anything. It's really secure in here. And that is how the computer mounts inside the rocket. Three, two, one. The next steps I have for Explorer 1 and any computers preceding it is to create a custom made PCB. I think I'm ready to make the jump and I've watched a few videos on how to do it and I feel very comfortable about it. I have ordered some parts on the way so that I can be able to create this custom PCB and mount the components directly to it. This will also save me time soldering this giant's rat's nest as well I was able to make the board a little bigger. It's still going to fit within this 3D printed mount although I'm gonna adjust the spacing here in the middle. So it'll still fit within the Olympus Estes rocket, but I also have another rocket ready for it as well. What I have here is a nice rocket that has a two inch diameter body tube, and it has quite the material already inside, but I'll be able to attach a second section for a payload bay so that I am able to attach the rocket here and to be able to launch it in a future but bigger rocket as well. More on that to come. Some more next steps would be a ground station so that I can receive telemetry data during the flight, but that'll be at least version five or later as I don't have any experience with wirelessly transmitting data. So that is Explorer 1 version one. Explorer 1 version two is well in the works and will be ready to go here in a few short months. Hopefully the weather will cooperate so I can launch it. If you guys have any suggestions on how I can improve my design, taking a look at the schematic uh, I have in the video, please let me know. I'm open to constructive criticism and learning. Thank you so much.